because this is going to be constantly going up and let's, let's maybe paint the picture here quickly so we can fully portray what we're trying to say, what, how this value is going to be constantly going up here. So I'll kind of set this, set the groundworks here. I'll let you kind of carry it with how it's really going to cycle. I mean, we're talking about the arbitrage and the positive feedback loop uh, that's yeah, going to be guess. coming at some point. <laughs> so what's going to happen guys at some point here. So well, that, that point of arbitrage we spoke about previously where you have an HSI, you advance against it. The hedron that you advanced out of that HSI is actually worth more than what it costs you to make that HSI itself. At that point, the person that's done that can then sell their hedron for hex and they'd get more hex than they originally had. It might be a little bit more, but it would be more. When that happens... Hedron's going to want to come down, but Hex is going to want to come up. And that's not the only point that's going to happen. Icosa also has the same kind of functionality uh, and an arbitrage opportunity. When you can mint more Icosa than you can purchase off the market for the same amount of money, then the same thing happens. You sell an HSI to the smart contract. You mint however much Icosa. You sell that Icosa on the market for hex to get mm -hmm. more hex than you originally got. And you consistently do that every single time. One of these opportunities happens, you're bringing the price of hex up as you're bringing the price of hex up, you're moving the price, the point of the arbitrage as well. And so what there's also the point though, that you talked about how the Icosa arbitrage supercharges mm -hmm. Hedron and the Hedron burn rate as well. Yep. So like yet yeah, now, you know, with Hedron, we had a single arbitration point with the relative value of the Hedron price versus um, the hex price in order to make a uh, 5555 state. Now we have another arbitration point with the price of ICOSA against that same variable, the 555 uh, hex mm -hmm. stake. And, and, and it stays actually stays true no matter what how much hex you use. It's always going to stay the same. Um, so now the, the most basic one that kind of gets the whole system rolling is that you know you you buy your hex, you stake it, you sell it to the Icosa contract, and then you get Icosa and sell that Icosa, and then you can buy more hex with it and repeat ad nauseum until that um, arbitration point meets up together. Now, when that happens, HSIs get sent to the liquidation market, which means people are able to bid on them with Hedron, and that Hedron gets burned. So we are printing a bunch of Icosa because the price has shot up. To bring that price down, which then later on is going to burn more hedron, to uh, which will indirectly pump that price over time. You know, it mm -hmm. doesn't directly pump the price because only buy pressure can pump the price. But if there are less coins around to sell and you reduce the sell pressure, the volatility to the upside goes down and the volatility to the downside decreases. And so it's, it's pushing the system in an, up into the right direction without directly doing it. And mm -hmm. so... When we get that happening, the price Icosa is now pumping hex price, which is helping pump the Icosa price uh, through that arbitration point. And then indirectly, you're getting Hedron burn, which is pumping the Hedron price, right? So now that the mm -hmm. Hedron price is pumping, we then hit the Hedron op uh, arbitrage point at some point in time. And then that just like is like fuel on top of the fire already. So now the Hedron, the hex price is pumping again because it's being bought to sell the Hedron. In the short term, the Hedron price is going down, but more of it's being burned in the long term because of the HSI. So that's pumping the price up even more to get a positive feedback loop with uh, hex and Hedron in a way. But also think about this, the hex <laughs> price is pumping at that side too. And so what happens when the hex price pumps? The arbitration point for hex versus Icosa goes up. And when it goes up, it incentivizes incentivizes people to buy the Icosa off the market because then you're able to get a larger percentage of the Icosa staking pool without having to sell HSIs. And so mm -hmm. the native way to increase your relative size in the Icosa pool is directly tied to the rate at which you can buy Icosa through the HSIs. So if for some reason you can get it cheaper off the market, you're incentivized to go there instead of HSIs. So the hex price goes up, incentivizing people to buy it on the market, pushing the Icosa up. up and now we're just at the situation where we we started with that whole loop that I just described can start all over again. Right. Yep. That's, yep. that's pretty much like <laughs> it's nuts. And I think the thing that I want to add in too here is that like every day the T share rate goes up, Yep. which means it is harder to mint Hedron, which means mm -hmm. it's a little bit harder 
to stake a T-share, which means that arbitrage point is moving up with the price and the T-share rate. Yep. And over time, like I don't think – for those of you who are understanding this, because I know it's probably <laughs> – there's a lot of you sitting there thinking, what did I just <laughs> yeah. But if you're still following, this is this is a supercharged situation that will occur in the future.